Today I want to deal with the topic entitled, What You Bind. What you bind and what you lose. You see, I think one of the things that we are lacking in the body of Christ is the fact that we don't get the understanding that we have a responsibility to do something. We have got a responsibility to actually do some things in this earth. All right, God is ready to move, but we need to actually have some action. And so a lot of Christians get to the place where we have the information, where we get to the place where we sit down and we know what we should be doing, but we don't actively do it. Okay, so let's go to Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. It says this, Surely I say to you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed. And so this morning I want to challenge us. And that is, do not settle for the idea of knowing something. Listen to me. Do not settle for knowing something. You have got to settle for being a doer of God's word. If you are not a doer of God's word, you are never ever going to receive what God has in store for you. You're never going to get into the fullness of what God has got in store for you. You're never going to receive what God has for you. Alright, so this morning, you need to decide, what are the things that I'm going to bind? Well, what I bind is a demonic influence. Anything where Satan has got an assignment or a right into my life. Whether it be my family, whether it be relationships, whether it be my business, no matter where it is or what I'm busy with, if Satan has got a demonic influence affecting it, I have a right to bind it. Alright? In my name, you will cast out devils. Alright? In my name, you will heal the sick. In my name. So, Jesus Christ has given us an authority to do these things. But we have to line up with the Word of God. And so, this morning, saints, I want to challenge us. Are you ready to do what God is calling you to do? Are you ready to go and make a difference? Are you ready to sit down and say, God, I am going to go and bind what needs to be bound. Every demonic influence, every negative thing that is around us, you can bind and restrict that influence in Jesus' name. And then what do you lose? You release God's word. I release peace. I release blessing. I release God's prosperity. To me over that situation. And so this is what we need to do. My challenge is this. Are Christians actually doing the word or are we just getting fat? You know the worst thing and the worst injustice that I could ever do to you is this. Is give you a lot of information and you do nothing with it. I promise you that would have been the biggest injustice. It would have been better that you just didn't even know about it. Why? Because if we do not actually become active in doing God's word, we're never going to see the power of God in our nation. And so I'm trusting that we are going to go out today, we're going to bind some of the demonic influence that is coming against us or whatever the area is that you want to pray over, and start releasing and, and loosing life, blessing and prosperity in the name of Jesus. And so when we come around the table today, I want to just celebrate the fact that we as the body of Christ have authority in Jesus' name. You know, and we have been given the authority to do this in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's just pray together. Lord, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, that you love us and you care for us so much. Lord, we ask you right now, please forgive us of any wrongdoing. Any wrong action, any wrong motive, any wrong intention. Lord, anything that we've done that's ungodly, we ask you please to forgive us. And Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to forgive us as well. Lord, where we have not been active in your word. Where we have not been doers of your word, but just hearers. Lord, where we have not applied the word of God. Where we have not restricted the evil. We have not been the salt that we should be in Jesus' name. And not being the light that we should be. We ask you please to forgive us. And Lord right now I pray that you're going to stir us up. Lord we thank you for the price that was paid in Jesus name. On the night that Jesus was betrayed he took bread and broke it. And he said that this is my body that was broken for you. He took the cup and he said that this is my blood that was shed for you. The body of Christ was broken for your physical and emotional healing. The blood of Christ was shed. For your salvation, protection and provision in Jesus name. I want to tell you right now. 
that as we come today and celebrate the price that has been paid for us, I want us to celebrate the fact that you've been given authority to bind and loose things on this earth. And God says that if we do it on this earth, it's going to be done in heaven. There is a supernatural release of power that comes for restriction and for loosing as long as the church is using our weapons. And so I want to challenge us today. As we take communion, let us celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ has paid the price so that we have this authority in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that as we take of the elements right now, Lord, that we will understand and celebrate the authority that the church of Jesus Christ has got because of the price that you paid in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, excuse me, Amen and Amen. Let's put that together. Let's pray over our physical bodies. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray over our physical bodies. Lord, we thank you that we are healed by the power of God. Lord, I thank you that by your stripes we were healed in the Spirit of God that dwell in us, quicken our mortal bodies. Lord, I thank you that every single symptom go right now. We command the symptoms to leave our body. We thank you, Lord, that we are healed by the power of God. And Lord, right now, <clears throat> I thank you for a supernatural strength and energy in our bodies. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we call and declare divine health over our bodies in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, saints, I'm really, really excited. As you know, I'm busy separating myself and I'm getting into the Word of God. I want to tell you right now, I have heaps and heaps and heaps of information to give you. Alright, when it comes to the book of Revelation, um, I have been studying it probably for 30 odd years. But I want to let you into a secret. This is going to be the first time ever that I'm actually going to teach it. Alright, I have avoided teaching it for many reasons. One of the biggest reasons is I didn't want the body of Christ just to go on on a hype. I needed to have enough word inside of me that it doesn't just become an opinion that I actually can defend my case. All right, theologically that I can defend what I'm going to teach. All right, and so I'm really excited about what God has given us and where we are going. And I really believe that as we teach on the book of Revelation, we are going to have something solid in our hands. I also want to just encourage you to let you know that when we do teach on the book of Revelation, I would encourage you please to download that app. All right. Because we are going to be giving far too much. It is impossible for you to maintain and remember everything that I teach you. Because I'm going to do it thoroughly, but I'm going to do it simply. Okay, so we're getting ready for that. I'm really excited for it. And I can't wait to get going. Because as I'm getting into the Word, I'm seeing Jesus Christ is awesome. Listen, I love battles. I love climbing in there. And I love it when we win. And so I tell you what, it is amazing. This is a love story. The book of Revelation is really a love story. And uh, it is really about Jesus Christ and the bride. That's what it's about. And it's a battle for the bride. And let me tell you something. Our bridegroom wins. And I'll tell you what, it is amazing. It's going to be awesome. I'm telling you, you're going to sit down and you're going to see the book in a totally new light. And you're going to see some of the most incredible things come forth. All right, so I want you just to prepare for that. I want to say thank you for those that are sharing the video, getting it out there. I really do believe that this is going to assist a lot of people. I really do believe that if we get this thing under our belt, um, we are going to be able to do this in a really, really spectacular way. I also want to just announce that we are also going to, um, from the onset I want to announce this, that we are going to make the book of Revelation into a book, just like we did with Kings and Priests. It's going to be a proper book, okay, that's going to have all the facts in it, all the diagrams, I'm going to put in diagrams to make it exciting for you. Alright, so you don't just read it. Okay, so you're going to have a book. You'll have your kings and priests, principles and business. You'll have your book of revelation. You're going to have your book on uh, our communion teachings. And you're going to have a book of remembrance. Okay, so that's exactly where we're going. But it's going to take some time. But I just want you to let you know that that's where we are planning. And that's where as soon as uh, I get to the last chapters... Uh, I think it's going to be pretty close because I'm going to have people um, basically working with me as I teach. They are going to prepare the, the sections. 
All right, so it's going to be ready. And so I trust that you're going to have a wonderful time with us. All right, so I want to just pray over our nation this morning. I want to tell you right now that the church has power, the church has authority. The church has a plan um, and has a responsibility to come and pray over our nation. As we pray, God is going to move in a spectacular way. So I want us just to pray over our nation today. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that as we come together as the body of Christ, Lord, we pray <coughs> over every sector of our economy. We thank you, Lord, that our economy is going to prosper in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you are going to move by your Spirit. And Lord, I thank you right now that you are going to do a supernatural work in our lives. And Lord, I thank you in businesses. Father, I pray right now that you are going to do something miraculous in each one of our lives. Father, I pray that as we go, we will establish not only uh, pillars and altars, but God, we will restrict everything that Satan has tried in Jesus' name. I pray right now that you are going to move by your Spirit in a mighty way. Father, I thank you right now that you are going to do a mighty work in every believer's life. Lord, that we are going to stand and see the power of God in our economy. We pray over every business. We pray over every sector. Lord, we release the power of God and the blessing of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I pray right now that you are going to do a mighty thing in our economy. Lord, we call forth every prophetic word that has been spoken over our economy. We release a blessing and the power of God to flow in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, right now, I thank you that you are going to move over this COVID virus in Jesus' name. We come against it. We bind it in Jesus' name. We bind its effect. We command it to die and to dissipate and leave our nation once and for all. And Lord, we thank you that every curve will just crash. And Lord, we thank you for divine healing for those who have been infected. And Lord, we thank you that a supernatural blessing will be on every single person. And the power of God will be released across our nation like never before. And Father, I thank you right now that as we stand together, Lord, we are going to see the power of God move like never before. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I want to just tell you right now, that as we continue, we are going to build our faith. We are going to believe God. We are going to restrict what Satan is trying to do. And we're going to release the power of God. And I want you, please, just to keep praying for us. All right, keep praying that God will give us the exact um, input that we need and the wisdom. Okay, so that we can bring the real truth to the body of Christ in everything that we do. I want to encourage you. It is Wednesday night. All right, I want to encourage you. If you are still in lockdown, you don't have a small group to get to. Excuse me, I want you to be part of our Zoom sessions. We have a Zoom session tonight, every Wednesday night. At 7 o'clock where we get people connected all over the country. And we are praying for each other. We're standing together. Even if you go there with the intention. You know, there are people like farmers who can't get into a town. Can't get to a church. Can't get to a small group. I want you to know this is connecting people across the nation. And so I want you to know we need to pray for each other. We need to be there for each other. We need to encourage one another. So I want to encourage you. If you've never been to one of our Zoom sessions, come on tonight. All right, the links are going to be sent, put on uh, uh, Facebook as well as, as also on our um, groups. All right, but I want you please just to be aware of this because we are trying to get the body of Christ together in Jesus' name. So I want to encourage you to join us tonight at 7 o'clock and the links are out there. All right, and then I've got just one more thing that I'd like to mention uh, before we go and that is this. Um, for those who, who don't know him, um, Carmen, who is probably one of the biggest influences um, in, uh, in the world in the 80s with regards to Christian music, he passed away yesterday. All right, and he was about to go on tour again, but uh, unfortunately there's some complications with a, with a simple surgery, and he passed away yesterday. But listen to this. If you have never listened to Carmen's music, I put a post out about him, and I've got the link there. Go and listen to Carmen's music. You will see what an impact he did for, a, for the next generation. We need to pray that somebody will pick up this mantle 
and carry it on for our next generation. Our young people need an example. I want to tell you right now, Carmen was the single biggest reason why so many young people, youth groups in the 80s, went right across all over the world. The biggest youth groups started because of the influence of Carmen, who had this attitude of, Christians are not wimps, they will stand up strong. And I want you to go and look, and go and have a look at some of his, his music videos, and what an impact he had. He was a singer, he was evangelist, he led more people to the Lord than I can even imagine. I've been in some of his concerts. I'll tell you what, when you stand there and 5,000 young people put their hands up to say they're going to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm telling you nothing greater than a young person that is on fire and who loves Jesus Christ. Alright, so I want you please to go and just check that. I want to just honor him this morning. And he had a major impact in my own life as well. Alright, I just want to just uh, go back to the book of Revelation. I want to just tell you right now that I'm working through probably about 20 theologians' work. You must understand when you come to this type of topic, it's not about what you think or, what, or just one idea. You've got to wade through all of the opinions, all of the, the different ideas, right through from somebody who doesn't even believe in the rapture to post-trip to mid-trip to pre-trip, everything. I've got to go through it all so that I can get a solid belief on what I believe. Alright, so what I'm going to be teaching is my opinion on this. I haven't got time to go through everything. I'm going to take what I believe. But I just want to just give one more shout out and I just want to just say thank you. I'm holding a manuscript of 50 years work. This is from a lady by the name of Yvonne Burgess. And she did a topic, history, Bible history as prophecy. And what she did was she took all of the historical events and took the prophetic things and attached it to the end times. And I'm telling you what, this is more than 50 years work. And I was really blessed um, a few years ago where she sent me her original manuscripts. And if anybody knows her, she's probably one of the leading people with regards to end times and history and prophecy in the nation. Um, she now currently stays in, uh, in England. But the issue is this, is, is that there are so many truths. All right, there's so much that I could actually give you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take some of the biggest highlights across the thing of everything that I've learned. All right, across multiple theologians. And I'm going to bring it into the simplest way that I can. So that you will be able to know and understand the book of Revelation and how to grow and what to do in these times and what to expect in these end times. So God bless you. I want to tell you that I'm so excited. I can't wait to get going. Um, we are going to just really just make this as exciting as possible. And I, I'm, as I said, I'm going on about this, but let me tell you something. I've got a stirring in my spirit. I'm so ready for this. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And go and spread the word. Please get the video out about the book of Revelation. I just want to tell you, now that you've seen it, I think it's an excellent production. I'm telling you right now, you're going to thoroughly enjoy this. So God bless you. Oh, there we go. Declaration. I was about to say goodbye without the declaration. All right, let's get to our declaration today. Thank you very much for reminding me. You know, I have such faithful followers who check on me all the time. If I say something wrong, they will correct me. I will get it in the messages. I'll get it on my WhatsApp. I want to just say thank you to South Africa for keeping me on the straight and narrow in Jesus' name. All right, let's get into it. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration, increased assets, Great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, battles won that I did not have to fight, all because of the blessing and the favor of God in my life. 